Welcome in where 24 teams will fill these empty spaces as we reveal the FCS playoff bracket. 10 automatic qualifiers, 14 at large, is all hoping to get to Frisco, Texas to play for a national championship on January 7th. Here again, top eight teams get a seed and receive a first round bye. First round regionalized to help limit travel. All first and second round games are going to air on ESPN+. Plus. All right. Let's do the top eight seeds, starting with number one. Jay, no surprise at all. South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits, finished the regular season undefeated and untied for the first time in program history. And legendary coach John Stigelmeyer retires. What happens with first-year head coach Jimmy Rogers? The beat goes on. Quarterback Mark Gronowski is battle-tested, and this defense only allows 10 points per game. South Dakota State is the clear-cut number one seed. Well, the number two, the Montana Grizz, Rini. Yeah, Bobby Houck has them flying. They beat their rival Montana State yesterday, win the Big Sky Championship, get this number two seed. It's hard to go through Montana. An excellent team, very balanced experience, great run defense, and defense wins in playoffs. Riley Wilson, seven and a half sacks for them. They're a tough team. Number three seed overall, the South Dakota Coyotes from Vermilion Reading. Yeah, Missouri Valley Conference. Again, another very good defense, right? Top in, one of the tops in scoring defenses in the country. Only giving up about 15 points. Also balanced, can score as well. Another tough place to go on the road and play. A very good seed for them getting that three spot. Their first ever first round by a top eight seed. The number four, how about the Idaho Vandals? Won the Battle of the Domes yesterday. They're in today. Yeah, and the Vandals are scary. Head coach Jason E. Knows he's got a fantastic quarterback in Giovanni McCoy who can flat out spin it. They're on a mission, battle tested, quality victories during the season, including a victory over an FBS squad. Look for the Vandals to make some noise. First round buys for these teams. It's a great day to be a great day, Rini. Yeah, Greg Gutso and Albany's team, the highest ranked team out of the CAA. Talking about defense, it's a theme in the playoffs. Number one in the country rushing defense, holding teams to under 80 yards. Uh, Anthony Chakai, 12 and a half sacks. Uh, this is a team, this is a good seed for them as well out of the CAA. Montana State, all right, came up a little bit short yesterday in the Brawl of the Wild, but don't fall short of a top eight. No, they need to get their act together and forget about the Brawl of the Wild. Hopefully they can try and get a rematch. This is a two-quarterback system led by Tommy Malott and Sean Chambers. Head coach Brent Vegan knows this team can play better than they did the last weekend of the season. They got to forget about last week's loss. Lost in the semifinals to South Dakota State a season ago. All right. Now we know Furman as high as number two, down to number seven after the loss. Reading Jay, excuse yeah, me. yeah. When you talk about Furman, you know Clay Hendricks knows defense is the thing that gets it done for them. They only give up 17 points a game. If they can continue to play defense like that and help out an offense that has struggled three of the last four weeks badly. Saw their 13 game conference win streak snapped. How about Villanova Rini, number yeah, eight? The CAA gets another seeded team. Now it's a tough bracket they're in, but they get that first round by uh, running back Jalen Jackson averaging about seven yards a carry quarterback Connor Watkins like 18 yards of completion. They're the total package. Good that they got an eight seed. That's a tough bracket, though. You know what? You want to take the guesswork out of it? Win your conference, get your AQ, and leave the committee no choice. That's what we saw on Saturday. You knew Montana and Montana State were both getting in, but you don't want to lose this game, do you? For all the while, under five minutes to play. First quarter, Clifton McDowell runs it in. Montana 14-0. Third quarter, McDowell. Touchdown pass. Junior Berg at 20-yard touchdown. Montana. Up 27 to 7. And then Nick Osmo runs it in uh, and runs away from everybody. That's how you run into the postseason. Very Playing good. your best football with momentum well, on your side. And I watched that game yesterday. That atmosphere there is electric. That's a tough place for a team to go in and play. 37 to 7. How about the Big South? OVC. Again, this is for the AQ Gardner Webb and Charleston Southern. Jalen King, A.J. Johnson, 43 yards. Gardner Webb leading 27 to 10. Jane Brown runs it in and runs away. Gardner Webb, one of those teams that has experience in the postseason, and they kind of expect to be in postseason play right now. Impressive victory for them again as they run into the postseason. Second straight appearance, second straight conference title. Head coach Trey Lamb, congratulations. Well, yeah, there was some CAA madness. Four teams tied at the top. The CAA, we got to sort this stuff out, don't we? Villanova says, uh, we'll do some sorting. 
Connor Walkins. Jared Hayek. Hayek, 11-yard touchdown. Villanova up 14-7. to And then Io DeRugier. 10 yards out. Villanova up 21-7. to And it's Watkins in that connection again. Yeah, I think absolutely. Villanova played so well in this game. That's why they became a national seed. That's how you take care of business. An impressive win, 35-7 on the road at Delaware. Yeah, they, they took care of business. They lock sure. up a top eight. Delaware's got to wait to see yeah. if they're in the bracket. Meanwhile, Monmouth and Albany. Reese Poffenbarger to Ian Renninger. Five yards. Albany up 28 nothing, And uh, it would be fairly decisive. Yeah, one of the things about you can say about the Great Danes is they're a number one team in the CAA for a reason. They play great football in a very competitive FCS conference. This team has 20 takeaways on the year as well. They know how to get the ball back for their offense. Hicks for the touchdown. I love that you mentioned the head coach earlier saying afterwards, you got a Gatorade bath. It's okay. I'll probably catch pneumonia, but I'll, <laughs> I'll be all right. Coming off back-to-back -back losing seasons, they are in. And then Richmond and William and Mary. Richmond getting it done on the day. Josiah Williams, touchdown pass. And then, end of the fourth, first and goal, Malachi Emo finds Colton Turner, two yards. William and Mary down a point. They're going to go for two, Jay. Trying to make it to the postseason. I think it was no, whoever won this game had oh. a better chance at making it to the postseason. They come up a little short scrambling for your life. I don't know if that's the way you want this game to end, but this game meant a oh. lot. Right there. I, I like the call. Go for it, right? Go for the win right there, but... Richmond prevails. 13th FCS playoff appearance and their second straight. So it, it was a three-way tie. All three teams declared co-champs, but Villanova earns it. How? Four-point scoring margin differential yeah. in conference game. Wow, and that's why they got busy against Delaware yesterday. Well, that's why it, they needed all those points. And it just goes to show you how deep the CAA is. You go to that last game, you got four teams vying for that championship spot. Obviously, Delaware didn't end up in a tie. I would be shocked if they're not in this in this field. We got some more to get to. All right, this is the the upper portion of the bracket. The number one overall seed, South Dakota State, awaits the winner of. Uh, Gardner Webb at running Bulldog got that AQ, the Big South OVC. Head coach Trey Lamb authoring the second FCS playoff appearance. Ty French, all time sack leader there for Gardner Webb, 30 and a half getting it done. They will face the Mercer Bears. Congratulations, Drew Connick, Chronic and Company, their first FCS playoff appearance. They're on Harper, Carter, Peavy, Ty James. That's a really good offense there, Jay. Yeah, how about this? For Gardner Webb, you win a postseason game a season ago. This year, you have to go on the road down to Macon, Georgia, and take on one of the most opportunistic defenses in all of FCS. Incredible. Gardner Webb and Mercer in that first round match again. You see the time, you see ESPN Plus. That's where you can find them. Pretty interesting matchup here. Absolutely. When you take a look at it, and these conferences down there, they're going to have good old Southern type of football down there, but I really have to watch out for that Mercer defense there. We see the offensive numbers there, but the point per game differential lets you know their defense is really good at getting those takeaways. Oh, yeah, celebrate, fellas. It's a happy watch party. You got, uh, some, you got some boys. You got some dudes coming to town. I always remember the first time, right? Ken Stanley <laughs> first in the SoCon at quarterback. Sacks, good defense, fun offense, and fun times there in Macon. All right, moving on down. We know Villanova has the number eight seed. Who are they awaiting the winner of? The Duquesne Dukes out of Pittsburgh. Northeast champs. They beat Merrimack on the road yesterday for the conference crown. Jerry Schmidt and company. Arias Parentes, the best passers in the league and in the country. They will take on Youngstown State. The Penguins out of Ohio. Head coach Doug Phillips. Record of 7-4. and four. Getting in, quarterback Mitch Davidson and that offense finding their way into the field. Yeah, and you talked about Duquesne, a tremendous win over Merrimack and Youngstown State, as you said, finds a way. And listen, Missouri Valley Football Conference, I think, is the deepest in the country. At 7 to 4, Youngstown State gets in. It's a, it's a good first round matchup there. Youngstown State, their first appearance since 2016, and their 13th overall, a pair of 7 and 4 teams. Daryl Powell Jr., who's Really good catching the football as well. Some deep wideouts there for Duquesne as well. And Keyshawn Brown, and Joey Isabella, and Teddy Affel. There's a lot of good talent there, Reed. Yeah, Duquesne can score points. They were number one in total offense in the NEC. And, and Youngstown State quarterback Mitch Davidson 
having a tremendous year. And defensively, they'll get after the quarterback. They have over 30 sacks as a defense this year. And I think Youngstown State was clearly one of those bubble teams, so there has yeah. to be a sigh of relief in yep. Ohio. Did not see a watch party then. <laughs> <laughs> At least one that we carried. So that the, the word is getting out. Number five, Albany will take on the winner of but North Carolina Central. Again, they, they lost to Howard last week. They beat Howard beat Morgan State. So NC Central out of the Celebration Bowl, but they get the FCS at large after beating Delaware State yesterday. Davis Richard and company going to be taking on the Richmond Spiders out of the CAA, Jay. Yeah, this is going to be a very interesting matchup. You know, one thing that Richmond head coach Rick Huseman deserves credit for, after an opening season loss to Morgan State, who was in the Media Staff Athletic Conference, they righted the ship and got it going in the right direction. But let me tell you something. North Carolina Central head coach Trey Oliver knows he's got a special talent and quarterback Davis Richard. Ooh. They are not backing down from anybody. The reigning HBC national champions from a season ago. But how about this though? North Carolina Central has beaten three teams from the CAA this season Ooh. alone and they're going to have an opportunity to knock out a four. And this is when it counts, right? But you got to go on the road and do it. it, it this is playoff football at the FCL, FCS level is the best and North Carolina Central has a huge opportunity in front of them. Davius Richard, Eagles career total yards leader with more than 10,000 breaking. Earl Harvey's record from the 1980s, 29 total touchdowns uh, for him, and this offense is electric. Absolutely. They, when you add the running back in there with the star power of Mookie Collier, and they've got some guys on defense that really fly around, North Carolina Central was ranked in the top 10 for most of the season. There's a reason why they make, got the at-large. Colonels in Louisiana are excited. The Southland champs, their first conference championship in four years. You know, they played TCU, Sacramento State, set themselves up well for conference play. Finish six and four. And quarterback Pat McQuaid and company will take on the Southern Illinois Salukis, another team out of the Missouri Valley Football Conference head coach Nick Hill finds a way in. Reed. Yeah, this is an interesting first round matchup. As you said, Nichols gets that conference championship ready to go in Southern Illinois. You just mentioned it, Matt. Missouri Valley Conference, the deepest. Uh, Salukis get in there. Quarterback Nick Baker is a 2,000 yard passer. Uh, this is a defense, and, and I know we always look at the offensive stats, but you see the turnovers forced by both, which is phenomenal. Southern Illinois averages over seven tackles for a loss a game, so they're going to get after it. Uh, this, is a, this is a good first-round matchup. It'll be great to watch. Nichols and Southern Illinois, the winner will take on the Idaho Vandals. Again, that is the one of the sides of this bracket, the left-hand side, and they're way up at the top. Head coach... Well, South Dakota State, 11 and 0, first undefeated. Other teams waiting for us to finish. Let's go. South Dakota, of the Missouri Valley Football Conference, their best record in their 16 year Division I history, just one FCS loss. They will take on the winner. Oh, Sacramento State, the Hornets getting in. They lost to UC Davis yesterday, finished with a record of 7 and 4. Head coach Andy Thompson. And company getting in. Great wide out of Jared Gibson as well. They will face the North Dakota Fighting Hawks out of Grand Forks. Record of 7-4. Another Missouri Valley team getting in. Their fifth FCS playoff appearance and their second straight reigning. Yeah, and so Sacramento State, you, you touched on it, Matt. They lost their game yesterday to UC Davis, who's sitting there hoping they can get in as well. So Sacramento State gets another battle tested. They had a tough schedule this year. They battled all year uh, out of the big sky. They get in, and then North Dakota, just, again, another Missouri Valley team. Uh, it's, it's becoming a theme. Uh, also battle-tested, a very good program. The one thing, you know, Tommy Schuster, their, their quarterback, really good on third-down conversions is North Dakota over 50% on the year, which is phenomenal. So uh, this is a, another really good game I'm looking forward to. Lost in the first round last year, trying to get through Sacramento State, a team that made it to the quarterfinals last year as well in the FCS playoffs. Yeah, and it's just offense can do it all, defense as well. And as you said, lost last year, so a little chip on their shoulder this season. Jared Gibson for Sacramento State getting it done. Kylan Ross, one of the best interceptors in the big sky this season. Moving on down, Montana State out of Bozeman. They are going to await the winner of 
The Drake Bulldogs out, out of Des Moines Pioneer Football <laughs> League. They beat Butler yesterday, their first conference title in 11 years. How about this? A oh. combined 5 and 16 record the last two years. And their reward of getting in? North Dakota State, nine-time national uh, champion. Remember I told you the story earlier, like how at Howard we got into the playoffs for the first time. We found out we were going to Marshall. Well, for head coach Todd Steppes and Drake, you have to realize, hey, you made it to the postseason. Unfortunately, you got a tough draw. North Dakota State might have been a national seed in that conversation. Head coach Matt Entz has the bolt, has the bison really excited and pumped up. They're playing with a chip on their shoulder. Enjoy the experience. But this is all about North Dakota State. And how about this? If the Bison win this game, it'll be the only chance they probably have to play in Fargo the rest of the postseason. They're not used to that. It's uncharted territory. And they're not used to playing a first-round game. So talking about a team with a chip on their shoulder, yeah, NDSU, I think they'll be ready to go. The last time they weren't seated in a non-COVID year, 2010. Yeah, it's been a long time. 13 years ago, North Dakota State taking on Drake. We know Furman is the seven seed. They'll take on the winner of, they got the Chattanooga Mox. How about this? You get a nice payday from Bama and you get in today. That's not a bad weekend there for the Mox as they get their first appearance since 2016. And they will face, with a record of seven and four, they will face... The A Sun Whack Alliance champs, Austin P. Let's head go coach. P. Let's go P. <laughs> Scotty Walden, their second FCS playoff appearance. The other was back in 2019. They were left out last season. They break the stone this year, finally get through again, Reading. Yeah, and hopefully it, Chattanooga didn't get beat up too bad uh, by Alabama yesterday. But as you said, you get a nice paycheck, you get home, and you still make the FCS playoffs. So you know Chattanooga's very happy. And then Austin P. we've seen them in, in prior years get left out when we're kind of scratching our head, but they're in this year. Uh, Mike Diello, their quarterback, is having a great career. Javon Jackson, 1,000-yard rusher. Uh, they're ready to go. They're absolutely ready to go. Austin P. again, won only one game from 2013 to 2016. An all-time winning percentage of 355 coming into this season, the watch party there at F&M Bank Arena, having a good time. The number two seed, Montana Grizz, won the Brawl of the Wild. They're going to take on the winner of Lafayette Leopards. Out of Eastern Pennsylvania, the Patriot League champs took down Lehigh yesterday for their 700th all-time win and their first winning season since 2009. And they will face, oh, Delaware, those blue hands. Like, when, when are you going to announce us or will you? Team from the CAA. A couple of FCS losses to Elon and Villanova. Beat Duquesne in the regular season. They avoid first-round rematches there, so that's why they don't pair up there. But my goodness, Delaware getting in. Yeah, and there's some bubbles right now that just got their yeah. dreams popped and crushed when you announced Delaware as the last team getting in. But hats off to Lafayette and head coach John Troxel. His defense gets after it. You see 35 sacks on the season. That's doing it at a high rate. And Ryan Canty has to have the Blue Hens. Forget about last week. This is a football team that is balanced and can score in bunches. They play good defense. But, hey, you know what I also noticed, too? There's a little rivalry building between the CAA and the Patriot League. The Patriots saying we're more than just education. We play some pretty good football, <laughs> so we'll see what they can do at Lafayette. Jamar Curtis, fifth in the FCS in rushing yards. He's an 1,100-yard rusher there for the Leopards. There's your field. That's it. Man. Those are the teams.